Hi friends, and welcome to what's essentially going to be the last video on this channel here on Dopamine and Other Happy Chemicals. Uh, you may have heard on the last podcast that I decided to end the podcast, and I'm also putting a cap on this YouTube channel. And one of the reasons for that is, uh, well, I explained all the reasons in the podcast, but um, what I really want to do here in this video is put an end cap on everything in a sense that this has been a project, it's been a painting, it's been a piece of art. It's something that where I've been trying to figure out and express what introverted thinking means to me, what it means to be an INTP, learning all of the facets of what it means to be an INTP. And I want to basically leave you with the cherry on top, the final brushstroke, as it were, of this finished painting or tapestry or whatever, right? And so if you're watching this as like the first video you have ever seen that I've done, don't worry, there are all sorts of videos that I've already done on the channel that exist. This channel is still very much alive. There's lots of commenting, there's lots of connection, and the ability for you to continue to learn things and then eventually go and, and check out some of the courses I have available or links to some of the personality hacker stuff that I uh, recommend as well or other places that I recommend things. Uh, so the, the thing that I want to wrap this channel up with is talking about what are the practical, powerful mechanisms of introverted thinking for INTPs. And this can include any other TP, ENTP, ESTP, or ISTP. Two main ideas. One, that introverted thinking, particularly on its own for ITPs, is more so about problem solving. Problem solving is like this main magnet in the middle of the field. It's the main node. It's the main thing that at least I feel or that I found in my experience is what introverted thinking completely surrounds. And all of the tendencies and mechanisms and desires sort of come out from that. So the clean slicing of information, the gathering of all sorts of information, understanding the various nodes of a system, like all the pieces of a computer, so that if you something breaks in the computer, you also get to know all of the error messages. You get to know all of the possible ways that it could break so that you can fix it. Um, or that if you haven't found the problem, you can go in and try to figure out what that is because you have the ability to track all of the information and see when something doesn't quite line up, when there's a little bit of dis a disparity in the information, when there's inconsistencies. So INTPs or ITPs are always looking for inconsistencies because inconsistencies indicate a problem, right? So that can be concrete. It can be physical things. It can be subtle things. It can be relationships. It can be your own psychology. It really translates to as many things as possible. So you can see people as a problem. You can see emotions as a problem. You can see your parents as a problem and start to try to deconstruct all of that. And so when it becomes a challenge is, is when trying to play too much directly into the emotion world, or you're not letting yourself be in a space where your talents can actually come to the forefront. What I mean is that maybe you're working a job or you're in a relationship or you're still living with your parents in a situation where your parents don't value or anyone around you doesn't value your introverted thinking. And it's not necessarily your job to make them value it. I hear a lot of ITPs on the internet, various places, complain about other people not understanding introverted thinking. But I think that's also a measure of the second core factor, which is not having a high quality explanation of how our process works. So the second thing, the first one's problem solving. The second main thing is high quality explanations. That's when the extroverted feeling comes in, right? ETPs tend to, to dive into this much quicker than ITPs. But over time, when you get really good at solving problems, you get really good at explaining what the problems were or explaining how someone else can find the problem or even diagnose it or fix something because you don't want to have to keep redoing and solving the same problems over and over again. You want to move on to another interesting new th new problem, right? We're not necessarily, um, we're not mechanistically doing a routine over and over again. We're not uh, built necessarily to just keep solving the same problems, right? Our brain wants to solve new problems and wants to have a greater catalog of problems to solve. And so once we have a great catalog of problems, maybe we can look for patterns between those problems or 
uh, yeah, look for patterns between, between those problems and then be able to express and explain some of those patterns to sort of expand the scope of the ability to solve those problems. So one of the examples I use, it's such a kind of vague example, but Albert Einstein is the kind of the prototypical archetype of an INTP, at least that's what's been expressed uh, in type circles and stuff like that. Uh, and an INTP, as, an, uh, as Albert Einstein, he stumbled upon, I say stumbled upon, but he worked very hard to figure out a high quality explanation of something that he figured out. It was one problem after another that compounded this, 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 and became one big tapestry of a complex explanation of the theory of relativity and general relativity and all that fun stuff, right? And it gets so complex that it's difficult to refute, <laughs> uh, but it has paradigm shifting, culture shifting, uh, understandings of reality shifting ability by compounding and collecting all of these things and saying like, all of this equals this or this common pattern, this common idea, this common thing. And then that thing can be taken by all sorts of other people and reproduced and reused or reapplied for all sorts of different concepts and contexts, right? So the practical nature of this is someone like me doing this on YouTube to help other INTPs to be able to figure out the patterns in your own behavior, in your own mental health, in your own psychology, in your own expression, and figuring out, sharing all of the the details of all the things that I figured out. And in a sense, this video is like the denouement, it's the thing, it's the, it's the cap of a lot of what I've figured out over the course of creating this YouTube channel and ending on this main idea of problem solving and high quality explanations. Now, if you keep your eyes focused or you keep your, your mental space focused on two main, the, those two main ideas as uh, your zone of genius in a sense, right? Your problem solving ability and your expansive ability. So whether it's SE or NE, extroverted intuition or extroverted sensing as an INTP or ISTP, you're then able to pattern out and use that problem solving in more contexts than just your own or more contexts uh, that are a bit disparate and you could see some of the universal laws of some of those problem solving patterns emerge. So like I said, with problem solving, it's it, it all leads back to this idea of like, if you're clean slicing something, you're collecting all of this data, you're looking for uh, disparities, you know, incongruities, I should say, or inconsistencies, those are all mechanisms of problem solving. So what I want to leave you with is sort of a, a, a simple high quality explanation for how you can express and explain how you operate. And in a sense, it's, it's I look for problems to solve and I'm a problem solving type of person. Like I look for inconsistencies. I can gather a lot of information about stuff I'm interested in. It's difficult for things that I'm not interested in. And then when I gather enough information, then I can start to learn how to teach that thing, or I can, I can explain that thing. Uh, so it's up for you it, it's, as an INTP to take the responsibility for going in the direction of where you want to go, learning the things that you want to learn, not just defaulting to an industry that other INTPs go into or that you feel like you're supposed to, but fully exploring the different possibilities of different industries or ideas or skills or concepts that are fascinating to you, right? And then figuring out how, you know, the practical stuff, making money, etc. But in an essence, I think one of the biggest challenges for INTPs is the communication part, is the community part, is the people part, right? And what happens is trying to go directly to the extroverted feeling of it all, trying to sloppily <laughs> go directly towards being uh, friendly or just showing up and taking up space or letting drama unfold around you or any of those things that I've talked about in all sorts of videos. Um, but if you're bringing your honesty, you're bringing your genius, you're bringing what you've figured out, you've figured out what you've discovered, um, your talents, and um, really bringing those contextually to the situations that you're in and leaving the situations that you don't want to be in. Part of that is the bravery to grow up and leave those situations and find things that actually suit you so that 
part of the patterning of it all is that the more context you get in, the more you see commonalities in problem solving, particularly when then, and then it starts to come with like relationships and psychology and other those concepts, then you start to feel like you can navigate the world anywhere. Like you don't feel like the, the world has to accommodate you. You don't feel like you're not going to feel like your parents need to understand you. You're not going to feel like your, your partner needs to fully um, accommodate your needs, but that you can actually speak up for your needs, that you can then uh, be able to be able to, to say what you need, show up for what you need, and go in the direction of what you need, right? So that's what I want to leave you with here on dopamine and other happy chemicals as we wrap up this channel. Uh, leave comments and questions. I will still answer comments and questions on this channel, but I'm just not going to be making uh, videos anymore or uh, uh, podcasts because I'm moving on to a project on my personal channel called Open Source Thinking. You can search for it, Christian A. Rivera, open source thinking, it'll come up. You'll see my, my lovely face and probably the hat. <laughs> and, uh, uh, what I'm doing on that channel is I will still talk about some type stuff, but what I'm trying to think about these days is what are some of the things that I can share that are high quality. Like I'm getting moving into the high quality explanation portion of my life. And I want to try to create simple explanations for things. Uh, I'm going to do shorter reels or shorts at times, or if I need to do a tutorial to express something that I figured out, right? Open source thinking is basically expressing stuff that I figured out that I feel like I couldn't find on the internet or through an easy Google search, or that I couldn't find a high quality, simple explanation for, right? The idea is something like this video, kind of dense, like it's 10 minutes. This video is about 11 minutes, 12 minutes right now, but um, it's densely packed. The idea is to provide uh, as much density of the concept as possible. So, uh, and I'm not just talking about type. I'm going to talk about, uh, tech stuff, uh, whatever it is that I come across that I problem solve. It's really meant for like Google search algorithms and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm not trying to necessarily make money from it. I just, um, I feel like I'm in a stage in my life where if I'm learning things and figuring stuff out, it's kind of a shame if all of that stuff dies with me whenever it is that I die, right? So I am putting stuff out into the world for you, for others, and doing my best and showing up after I've figured a lot of stuff out and and have been doing a lot of healing and growing and, and, and practices and stuff like that. All the stuff that I've expressed here on this channel. So I want to formally thank you so much for being here, for listening, for watching, for subscribing, for leaving comments, for being a part of all of this really means a lot to me. Uh, I've got courses below happychemicals.org and also links to, uh, if you're an INTP, there's a course called INTX Unleashed. That's a really powerful course you should go check out for INTPs and INTJs. Um, and then I'll leave a link to my personal stuff. So cnotes.studio is the name of my multimedia stuff. Uh, so I do, I have photo prints that I sell on there. Um, I do, uh, events that I cover with photo and video graphic design, uh, and, um, uh, like kind of long form capture and stuff like that. So you can check out those things and samples of that stuff. So I appreciate you very much. Uh, do something awesome. Do something with your introverted thinking. They'll just use it to complain about your circumstance, like figure it out you might have to, you might be the variable that needs to change. That's really what I'm going to leave you with. So go do something awesome and good luck. See ya.